have uh, prostate cancer screening in North America, and although it is a controversial topic right now in the field, I think most men in the United States do walk with what we call localized or locally advanced disease, which is patients who have no evidence of metastasis, which means that it allows you as a consumer, as a patient, to be able to achieve cure with either surgery or radiation therapy or the combination of those two for that matter. However, there is a small pocket of patients who are walking in the office with de novo disease, which means they have their primary prostate in place and they just simply present it like this patient with symptomatic disease. They have back pain, you know, they're male, up in age, with symptoms that will raise the suspicion, well, maybe actually they have prostate cancer. So in, in this particular case, the patient presented with back pain, you know, that prompted their medical team to actually do a workup that included a PSA, you know, that was found to be quite elevated around 79 or so. And that prompted them to actually have the patient undergoing imaging scans, which is, includes traditionally a bone scan and a CT scan of the chest, abdomen, and pelvic region. And those scans, unfortunately for this patient, were able to show that the patient had developed already prostate cancer metastasis in bony structures. Obviously, prostate cancer is a bone tropic tumor, which means that uh, 80 to 90% of men who develop advanced prostate cancer will do develop metastasis in the bony areas, meaning bony metastasis. Half of them will have lymph node disease, which is either pelvic lymphadenopathy or retroperitoneal lymphadenopathy in the back of the abdomen. And a very few percentage of patients, maybe around 20, depends how you look at the data, 20 to 25% of the patients may present, in fact, with a visceral metastasis, which is defined by the presence of liver disease and or lung disease, which is not quite common for us in prostate cancer. If you develop prostate cancer, cancer metastasis, we do know not only that you had developed advanced prostate cancer and had developed metastatic disease, but the impact of developing bone metastasis in a, in a male with prostate cancer not only is impacting their mortality, you know, within five years, we know back in the day prior to the novel oral agents getting approved, you know, less, more, less than 5% of people would actually be alive within five years when they had developed metastatic disease to the bone. Now with so many of the changes that we have included in the field, oral novel therapy, immunotherapy, radionucleotide-based approaches, chemotherapy for that matter, and the sequential option for these patients to receive these treatments over time throughout the natural history of their prostate cancer, I think those numbers have improved for less than 5% to around 30%, which still tells you that if you develop bony metastatic disease, almost 80% you know, patients will die within five years. In fact, the best data that we have, looking at Estampede, which is the British data, looking at chemo and AVI, Latitude, looking at AVI, and even our own American data looking at charted, we know that men with high volume disease, if they get suppression of testosterone alone, the median survival is around 34 to 36 and a half months. On the contrary, if you add or intensify their therapy, you suppress their testosterone and then intensify with either chemotherapy for that matter, or if you decide to use abiraterone acetate, you know, you can actually get that median survival to almost a 55, almost 60 months or so, which is a significant improvement in outcome.